three, two, one. Hey everyone, Harry Welchel here today. I have Jawad Sabra, and we're going to be talking about how he generated 12 quick chats and five strategy sessions with ideal clients in the last 30 days. But before we get into that, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Jawad, why don't I pass it over to you? Can you just briefly introduce yourself and share a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, so Jawad, um, I uh, came to the UK as an international student myself, and I've been working in the UK for the past six years in the technology industry as a tech consultant, and I started my consulting business uh, recently to help international students find work here in the UK, uh, particularly in the computing industry and uh, the technology space. Awesome, awesome. So. Um, how long have you been doing that? So this is something that I started last year in 2019. I did some work in recruitment before and some work in recruitment marketing as well. But the focus on international students, uh, we started doing this around uh, mid-2019. We also did some boot camps to help people get into computing and programming. And off the back of that, I decided, you know, I want to focus on helping international students because their problem is much more painful and the transition they need to do, it's, uh, it's much more profound uh, because they need work visas to work in the UK and being able to be hired by companies, uh, that takes, uh, takes a lot of effort. Um, so, yeah, we, we started doing that uh, in late 2019 until now. Cool. So what do you think, is there anything that makes you guys different or unique in terms of approaching this problem, helping international students um, get these jobs in the UK? Yeah, so that, that's a very good question um, because this niche, it's quite niche in nature, you know, um, there isn't a lot of career coaches out there that are focused particularly on international students. Like, you, you know, you might go and find a lot of career coaches that help people get jobs or like progress in their career. But in terms of, uh, the international student niche, there's only a handful of, uh, people doing this in the UK right now, uh, or companies. And uh, the typical approach they follow is more about the graduate schemes and the graduate rules uh, route, which is, you know, you, you got to prepare for the interviews and the assessment um, and, uh, and it's quite focused on the language and the interview side of things. But the way we do things is a bit different because we lead with building connections um, and, and we, we try to make we, we help international students realize that the decision which is which the companies are making is really about you and your character and whether or not you're a good fit to be with the company because the the visa part and the sponsorship part is only part of the equation and it's not really the biggest thing uh, because when the employer makes a decision on the person they want to hire them they will do whatever it takes to hire that person <laughs> they need visa or whatever um so and, and that that decision is made from an emotional uh place uh you know if they see you they they show they they see that you're eager they see that you're a good fit to be with the team and they like the skills and that what you have to bring to the table they will say yes that's you know that's it we want to we want to have you on board and that's really the transformation that we have we help our students um, achieve to become that person got it and that seems like a really unique insight that just you help them focus on their character um, how they position themselves like a lot of soft skills and then if you do all that the administrative logistics around getting visas and things like that becomes a lot easier is that kind of what you're saying yeah, so it's it's basically a five-step process. You know, we, we start off by helping them find the focus and then working on their candidate presence, you know, their profile, and then building connections with employers and the way, the right way to really do the job search. Um, and then finally doing well in interviews and accelerating the, their career. Nice, nice. So... Um... Jawad, I'd love to, like, if you don't mind, like, I'd love to learn more about your story first. Do you mind sharing a little bit about your journey, like, 
how you decided to, to go to school in the UK and what that was like? Yeah, so it's it's an interesting story, you know, because it's um, it's a it's a journey, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't easy. Uh, when I was applying to become a student here, a lot of people in my country, um, a lot of people said it's not possible. You know, it's you ain't gonna get a student visa, and even even if you get a student visa, you can't really work in the UK because it's super difficult. Were you the and, first one in your family to go to school in the UK? I I'm the first in my family to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> to to go to university, um, so yeah, I'm the first in my whole extended family to go to uni. Wow. Um, yeah, and um, and you know, you can imagine the kind of culture and social circles that you have, where if you know you're you're the only person who's kind of getting into that world. But even my friends, my friends weren't kind of the same mindset. So my friends were university people, you know, they studied, they, they were educated. And, and they're the ones who were telling me it ain't going to happen. Like, don't waste your time applying to the UK uh, because you, can't, you will not be able to find a job. Uh, and this really fired me up. You know, when people started talking like this, it really kind of burned that, that thing inside me like, I really want to make it happen. And I was like, yeah, well, okay, I'll see how it goes. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going to make this happen no matter what. And so I applied to study here and got the visa. And we, we actually went through some different steps to be able to afford, you know, because my family comes from, you know, uh, working class so we kind of sold our car and borrowed some money. So so I was able to study here. What did, and then, yeah, what did your parents think of this? Were they um, encouraging, supportive? Um... Yeah, luckily, actually, uh, you know, they they did most of the uh, the legwork on this. So um, because first of all, I was reluctant to apply to to even travel. You know, I was like, yeah, maybe I could try my luck working here. But we we all knew the chances were uh, were slim in being able to find an industry job and and have a you know have a decent sort of career in business or anything in in that economy. So and they were like, the best option maybe is to go abroad. And um, and we realized that there needs to be a, a, a certain sum of money that we have to pay for university. So they were like, yeah, we're going to sell the car. And my dad's friend pitched in to help us out as well. So my dad went to talk to him and um, they helped us out with the, with the accounting and the money and things like that. So I can do the paperwork. And um, yeah, and. You know, they, they did a lot of work and they were always supportive. Um, my parents, they were always encouraging to this because they knew there's a better future out there. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And yeah, that's that's how it happened. And I ended up coming here and I started my uh, master's degree um, here. Um, so you studied undergrad in your home country and then did a master's here? Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And what was the um, your undergrad in, and what was your master's in? So undergrad was computer engineering, and uh, postgrad was computer systems engineering. Um, they sound quite similar, but the modules here modules means courses like the specific uh, courses in the program. They were uh, more about systems engineering in general, not specifically computing. Which was really interesting. It was a really good experience, but I realized everything that I've learned in uni was not quite the same as you would see in the real world. You know, when you get an in industry, it becomes a different ball game. But it was overall a really good experience. And did you did you apply to multiple schools or just one school, or how did that work for the masters? Yeah, when I was when I was there, actually. I I sat like nights on end, you know, doing research uh, because like right now you get these educational consultants and companies, you know, they say, hey, apply to the UK. We're going to help you through this process. 
I didn't know anyone back then. I didn't know these things existed. And uh, I didn't have any relatives or people I knew here in the UK. So I was like, you know, this is on me and I'm going to do it by my own. So, uh, and I started, I, and I went to work on that. So online, just doing research, finding universities, what are the best universities, for example, or like the most affordable unis in London. Uh, so I went to a few to a few university fairs in Lebanon and I got some names and um, and then I started send firing off emails to them really. So yeah, I, I shortlisted like four or three universities and I got two offers and I accepted one, obviously. And so like you I guess you accepted this to go to, and go to university and it's not like you have no idea if there's gonna be a job at the other end of it, right? <laughs> this is this is a really good one because this is actually something I'm experiencing with my students right now. You know, I'm trying to tell my niche, hey guys, you need to be thinking about the future, your career. But if I go back to me at that time, I was like, I'm not thinking about like one year from now. I'm just thinking about the next step. And I, and I didn't know what's out there for me, but I just knew that I really need to get out of this environment and be in that environment so bad and I knew everything's gonna be okay you know things are gonna open it's like you're in a video game and you're just thinking about your next achievement <laughs> you know and how it unlocks the next and that that was it really for me so so yes yeah, because like, I was curious if like you're like okay I want to get a job in the UK to get a job in the UK I just have to go through and get some degree in the UK to be able to do that? Like it's almost like a, like a box that has to be checked or like, was that the way you were thinking about it? Or were you like genuinely interested in the program, like for its own sake and learning the content and stuff? Right. Yeah. I see what you mean. Um, typically, I mean, why does anyone go for university, right? It's like your career prospects. And to, to me, the end goal was always the job, like finding a better career and a better job. And the university degree was the door to that. The stepping stone. Yeah, it was, it was the stepping stone that's going to open up the door for, for that career. And that's why most international students decide to study in the UK to get that international work experience. It's all about the career. And so even though you had that attitude, when you actually came to it and you were doing the school and the classes, you were, even though you had that desire, you knew that was the end state, it sounds like you were still more focused in the short term about the next achievement, getting good grades in the classes. Is that fair? Yes. I think every step of the way, I was always focused on the now. Yeah. Because it was, it was an intense transition to go through, you know? It's a lot. You're, there's so many things that are changing. Yeah. New environment, new people, away from your family, away from your friends. So there was a lot going on. New language on. too? Or did you already know English well? I, I already knew English well, well, which was a really good advantage. Um, and my, and this really helped with my motivation. And I, and I would say this is probably one of the major things that helped me continue because at many points I thought I want to give up. It was so tough for me. Um, you know, because like working full time, studying full time, uh, doing night shifts in a hotel. You were working uh, during the time too. Yeah. So working night shift and in the day you got to do your homework for university and you got to do research and find it and apply for a job for an industry job as well, because you have a limited amount of time. Your visa is going to expire at this point in time. If you don't find a job before then, you're going to be out. So there was a lot of pressure. And to me, just being feeling like the UK is a place that I really belong was one of the main things that kept me motivated and kind of kept me pushing forward. That's amazing. So, yeah, so it's like there was so much on your plate that even though you knew that the, the really the main priority was to get that job after school, you just didn't have bandwidth to like focus on that from day one. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I would say definitely not, man, because, uh, and 
there was even more than that, you know? There was like breakups, relationship issues, uh, work, studies. So there, there was a lot. So you're always thinking about how can I get this out of this hole that I'm in right now so I can look at the next steps. <laughs> how, like, how did you, what like motivates you to keep pushing through all that? Um, I would say my family, my family, because they went through so much trouble to, to help me get here. And I was like, if I'm going to give up and throw all this away, it's, it's not going to be good. You know, it's like throwing all that effort away. My dad is the type of person who really goes to work. You know, he's a builder and paint, painter, like, and he, he used to go to work like 12, 14 hours a day um, to make that small amount of money to help us out. And my mom was a working mom as well. So my, my family went through so much trouble. And I have two younger brothers. So, and they, everyone in the family looks up to me. You know, I, I was the first person who goes to uni, first person to go out of the country. Uh, we had never traveled outside of Lebanon before. So there was a lot at stake for me. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to throw all this away. If, if I'm going to give up on myself, I'm not going to give up on my family. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So what, um, what was the experience like for you getting your first job? Um, so it was, it was never what I expected, man. Like, so a lot of, a lot of people who study something, you know, I studied computer engineering. I, I was always thinking, you know, after my degree, I want to work as a computer engineer or like a, a software engineer. But it was never like this. You, it was, I realized that you have to start somewhere and it's not going to be your dream place. Uh, and getting my first tech job was in QA testing. So I started doing some manual testing on a website and it was a two weeks contract. I didn't know where, where that was going, uh, but I, I really hit it off with the manager and he was like, if you do well in these two weeks, we're going to discuss further steps. And I was like, and that's, you know, to your point, focusing on the now, <laughs> even when you get the first job, it's really important to focus on where you are right now. So I was like, these two weeks are going to change the whole future for me. And I focused on making sure that I do my best during these two weeks. And those two weeks turned into one month. And then the one month turned into three months. And then three months into one year, and then one year into two years. So I ended up working with the university for two years. And that's where I ended up being a software engineer. So that's, that was really the journey until I got to that point. That's amazing. So what, why, why do you, did you decide to like start helping other engineers and computing students versus just keep going as a software engineer? So I think um, going through everything that I went through here in the UK, you know, I mentioned to you, I've been through a lot of different divert, you know, um, kind of tough times, I would say. And and going out of that, I, I got a nice job, you know, and I had some really good progression in terms of my career in the tech industry. But I always, I was always thinking there's something out there, you know, there's more to this. And, uh, and this wasn't a long time ago. This wasn't like 10 years ago. This was like <laughs> these last few years. So when I started working and going to work, I... I was always thinking there must be something out there. And that's where I started looking into business, you know, and I started seeing other people who are doing consulting and how you could actually scale your consulting business to, to, do, to make, you know, six figures, seven figures, 20 million a year. And I figured, okay, I can't be a software engineer forever and I can't really make 20 million, but if I look into the business route, that's what's going to help me build that future for myself. Because my, my dream has always been financial freedom. 
And so I figured, okay, business is the way. And that's where my journey started looking into consulting and building my own business. Awesome. So let's go back to the beginning. Like, what, How was things going in the consulting business before we were working together? Yeah, so before we were working together, I had... You know, I had decided, okay, I want to work with international students and I want to help them. And I've already had a couple of clients, but it felt so kind of watered down, you know, like, okay, the clients that I'm working with, am I working with MBA students to help them find jobs? And, or am I working with like completely desperate people who are running out of time just to help them kind of you know, uh, find any sort of work experience. And it was, I didn't really know where things were going. You know, I, I, re- I, I knew I needed help and I knew I needed to do something about my situation because it wasn't a very comfortable place to be in, in your business. Uh, because I imagine, I always imagine like if I have two clients, I'd be over the moon, but testing my emotions i was like you know this isn't how it's supposed to feel so how did it feel i i I knew i needed clarity you know i uh, i felt like these aren't really the types of clients that i want to work with so it it felt confusing at the time yeah Lack, lack of clarity yeah so there there was confusion because there's there were so many questions going in my head right should I continue doing what I do? Or should I focus on the tech? Um, Should I focus on STEM? Should I focus on this group of people? Um, How can I find, you know, the right person and the people that I dream to work with, that I really enjoy working with, you know, the people I look forward to to get on the call with. So, yeah, there, there was a lot of questions and a lot of decision fatigue as well. I wasn't able to make a decision and say, this is it, and this is how I'm going to do it. Let's just start the work. So what do you think, If there was there like one particular job or objective you had at the front of your mind? You're like, I've got to knock this down, or did you not even have that? Like there was not a clarity on what was the, the next step for you? Um, yeah, it was always kind of like, I just want to close a client, you know, I just want to get that extra client or something like this. Well, the overall goal was to scale the business. Yes. But to me, I was just like, you know, like numb down. Like if you're living numb and just knowing that oxygen is going into your body, I felt like that's what that was the case in my business, just kind of carrying things on and on not really making a decision or something, but just hoping that your next client pops out of nowhere. Um, yeah. So yeah, so getting the next client was the next job or goal. How were you trying to get the next client at the time? I was, I was trying different things, you know, doing value content uh, a little bit here, doing some outreach on LinkedIn. Um, live videos and sending messages to people on Facebook and things like that. So doing different things. What, what were fresh, what was frustrating at the time about your progress or lack of progress? It, it felt like a lot of work. I felt like I'm booking calls in calendar, you know, I'm talking to people, but nothing is happening. You know, I'm booking these quick chats in calendar but no strategy sessions and you're not having like those meaningful conversations with people that you can actually connect with, you know, smart people, uh, intelligent people that you feel, okay, this is the kind of person I I really want to work with. And so to me, I felt like I'm just running in circles and working, working, talking, 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 and talking my lungs out (laughs) sometimes. And there isn't this great return on investment. Yeah, it reminds me of, I, I think about sometimes I call it like spaghetti marketing. Have I told you that idea? Yeah. <laughs> Where you're just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and you're just throwing more and more and you're just hoping something sticks, but you have no <laughs> idea why it would or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like taking stabs in the dark, you know, like maybe this works, this works. 
Yeah. And the other thing that comes to mind, like, is like, uh, you ever heard the saying, like, to white knuckle something? No. White knuckle is like when you clench your fence, fist, your knuckles get whiter, right? And uh-huh. so it's like you're just white knuckling it, meaning like you're just gripping it so hard, you're hoping that it's going to work, but it's like, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> this is so specific and brilliant. Like, I've never heard this yeah. before. Yeah. So if someone says, oh, you're white knuckling it, it's like you're, you're too intense, you're too... You're too trying to control everything and grip it tightly. And it's like you need to relax and just, you know. And this is the very accurate description of my situation at the time, you know, because I felt like just banging my head against the wall. And I knew it doesn't have to be this hard, man. Like there is some way out there where I can go out and talk to people and close clients. And uh, and I knew there's an easier way. But yeah, it just felt like too much, too much pressure. So where did you first hear about us or me? So we, we kind of, we connected uh, on one of the consulting groups and, um, and yeah, as you, I think you, comment, you commented on some of that, my posts and uh, I, we, we, I just found myself in a, in a messenger chat with you. We were kind of chatting about things and, uh, talking about like the business and goals and things like that. And, uh, yeah, that's how it started. And with that, like what piqued your interest? I think I was looking for someone who is more successful than I am. <laughs> you know, I looked at your profile and things that you were doing, you were doing some really awesome work with, you know, other coaches and consultants and uh, you had that way to and it was different it was refreshing than what was out there because you weren't doing like a a whole bunch of videos or posts on your profile you just had those interviews and um, and you 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 were showing your results at the same time as well and that's that's really the combination that piqued my interest Cool. So what, um, if looking back at the last 30 days, what, what did we do together? What were, what were some of the big things that really, um, you feel like has helped you a lot? I think the biggest thing, um, that we achieved, um, throughout this time was the clarity, you know, getting clarity on my niche, uh, really honing down on the people that I want to target, and the people I feel comfortable working with and the people I can help as well. So being able to make that decision, it's like taking off 80% of the pressure. Um, it's, all, the, all these questions in your head, it, it really consumes your, your time and you're not able to make progress in any one direction. Um, it's yeah. like all those questions you had, it sounds like well, I helped you answer them. And it's not like I told you what you need to do all the time. It's just like we talked through it and I kind of gave you permission to like, just like stop engaging all those questions and just like take action and focus. Yeah. It's like therapy, you know, <laughs> it's like the therapist doesn't really tell you <laughs> this is what you need to do. Uh, but it's like they open the door for you to see, okay, this is how you can actually do it. And this is the possibility. Uh, and being able to work through this and bounce ideas off of you and in the group and getting that support. Uh, because when you have these questions, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? But if you go and ask a question and, you know, someone who's successful and really making those results and really making those strategy sessions, because that's really inspiring to me, you know, to see someone making that amount of revenue and that amount, that number of strategy sessions organically. And I'm like, yeah, this is this is the future for me. You know, this is possible for me. So if I if I get that answer from you, this means okay, there must be something that I could do better right now. Uh, and uh, and that's you know when when you set set it set a decision like make a decision. Okay, this is the right way forward, or this is what I'm going to focus on moving forward. And uh, and that's it. And you make the next decision. 
what about, so let's get, dig into this more clarity. So like, what about, I think one of the things was you got a lot clearer on your niche and your offer structure. Can we talk some about that? Absolutely. So, you know, because as I mentioned initially, my niche was like international students and I wasn't really sure, okay, should I focus on computing? Should I focus on Middle Eastern students or like students coming from a certain country? And I wasn't really sure. I was dabbling around all of these different niches. Um, and working together, I realized, okay, that we can actually focus on this specific group of students you know, the, the, uh, the type of the group of people who we can actually help with the most confidence and deliver the most value to them. Um, and, and getting that clarity on those people has opened the door for everything else, you know? <laughs> Wasn't there something about, so you got, you got a new message down and you posted on your wall and then all these people started messaging you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, when you update your bio on Facebook, I just, I was really excited after we worked together on that, and we kind of, um, kind of pinned down this message and this new niche, and I was feeling really excited, you know, it's a new offer, new niche, I updated my bio and a post, and it kind of gets shared on my profile, and people have already started asking questions, you know, how can I find a job in this, and how can I do that? And that was really, uh, yeah, that was really exciting. And like, so when that happened, I mean, you probably knew intellectually that that was possible, but what did it feel like to actually like see it firsthand and be like, ah, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I knew, I always knew like maybe this is where it should be, but I never, I, I don't know, something was holding me back to actually do it, you know? And when I, when I did this and I uh, posted about this, I started seeing those people. I was like, these people have been always in front of me, but they just needed that sign, you know, that thing from me <laughs> to allow them to kind of levitate towards me and just ask these questions. So it felt, it felt like you're opening up a new sort of, it's like a blue ocean, you know? It's like opening up new uh, potential for you. Yep. Okay, so that's kind of the niche in the message. And then the offer structure. You know, we went back and forth a lot about, like, what does that look like? Can you share a little bit more about that process at a high level? Yeah, so we did a lot of iterations on the offer because um, initially I kind of, had a an offer which has like a sales overview you know and a whole bunch of steps and a whole bunch of things that you need to do so i was actually confusing myself with that to be honest before before because i had so many things that i needed to go through but working on working together on that it just became quite clear for me the process that i need to go through for myself and take my prospects through it and, you know, the different elements that you need to have in your offer or your sales process even. Uh, so you're clear yourself and you are actually delivering it, you know, in a way that makes sense. And this is where building the offer in a way that's kind of similar to uh, titles of, uh, of weeks in a training course. This, this made a lot of sense to me. Um, and... It really simplified simplified things for me, and this is how we kind of built those five steps. Like it's uh, not it's not like it's not like we are like okay, this offer is gonna like co convince people or trick them into working with us or like it's gonna hit the right notes. It's like literally thinking through the offer made you more clear on what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not gimmicks, you know. No, absolutely, yeah. And this is this is another thing because like. In, in some in certain cases, like some gurus or some coaches are going to be like, hey, let's pimp up your offer, you know, let's, <laughs> let's kind of make it more buzzy and just more attractive. But that's, that's not really, that's what, that wasn't what I was expecting to get out of the work together because I knew what kind, what kind of person you were. And, uh, and, and we were kind of working on the exact offer, what sort of value does it have and how aligned it is it with the truth? That's that was really right. It wasn't about adding sizzle. It's like, how can we add more meat? 
Yeah, it, it was just being more aligned with the truth and make it most valuable to the people that we're trying to help. So how, and what do you think, like, so we got a better kind of niche and message statement. Can you speak to how you see the niche and the message? How does that interact with the offer? And why is it important to have like a really good niche and message first before you like map through the offer? So... Do you understand the question? Sorry? Does the question make sense? Yeah, maybe just repeat it because I, I, I kind of zoned out on this bit. <laughs> just okay. so I make sure I have the right question. Yeah, so we, we got clear on the niche and the message first and then the mm. offer. Mm -hmm. And looking back on that process, like, why was it so important to get really clear on the niche and the, the really powerful message before going through the recipe of the offer, the structure of the offer, the process of the offer? It's, it's super important because this is like getting ahead of yourself, you know, like you can't really travel in, into the future or like skip steps in the process. It's a, it's a step-by-step -step process. Because defining your niche is actually going to define what sort of offer you have for them. Right. If, if I'm going to talk about international students and then give them an offer that's tailored for computing students, no one's going to be interested in that. And they're going to be looking at me like, what is he talking about? So defining the message first is everything. You know, it, it kind of opens the door to everything that, that you're going to do next, even your sales process as well. Yeah, it's like the message is kind of like where you're going. It's the goal. And it's like if you don't know where you're going, you can't build the roadmap to get there. And the roadmap's the offer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or you, you can, but you're not going to get a good outcome. Like people, that's where I think some people trip up. Yeah, some people maybe think, oh, oh I just need to work on this, this part of my offer. And no need to think to worry about that. I've already defined this. But there's not enough time enough times that you can iterate on your message, and it always starts with the with the message and the niche and the market. You know, you, you can't improve that enough. And every time you do this work here, you really want to go and tailor the offer even further to that niche. Yep. So then, okay, so we did that. We got the offer, and then what was next? What did you do next? Um, I think next was acquisition. You know, um, the the way that you kind of convert those or like taking it to market, I would say, you know, taking this whole thing to market and shipping this whole thing. Because before I also had a lot of questions about, you know, just sending outreach and uh, reaching out to people and having these awkward conversations. I remember you had a lot of doubt around like, oh, I like you like you you look at all their profiles to see if they're a fit before you even like engage with them. Is that, tell us more about that. Yeah. So a lot of the times when I go out and trying to prospect people, I'm like, ah, oh, getting messages from people. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know if I can help this person. They're not a good fit. Um, and they're asking me some questions and I, you know, this is not the type of person I want to work with. And I had so, a lot of frustration in that. And equally, the, the effort involved in starting conversations with some people and the, them just responding yes or no questions, that was really awkward as well. <laughs> so, yeah, there was a lot of frustration and confusion in the, in the initial acquisition. And so what, what changed with, uh, with lead gen? So with, with lead gen... Two things I think uh, change. So first of all, getting the clarity on the way you position the conversations with your prospects is super important, man. Like um, knowing that there is a structure to this and it's not a random process and it's not <laughs> like, you know, a work of magic or, uh, or, or sorcery is very important because there is actually a structure and a way for you to build those conversations with your prospects. Uh, so you can really stop wasting time on those like people who respond yes or no. And what, why is this person talking to me? Uh, so you really wanted to, I really wanted to eliminate that. And that, that was really what, what I was able to achieve. And then the second thing is, this, this very structure that we followed 
it kind of helped me open up unlimited potential because people who I thought were not a good fit, drilling into that conversation and following that structure of the work, people started talking about things which I was like, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> this is the kind of person I'm looking for. Yes, definitely. We can help you. Let's hop on a call, you know? So I started taking the conversations into a completely different direction, which was really good. Yeah, that was when you started messaging me and you're like, this person, you know, uh, tells me that they want to do X, like they want to, they're studying like electrical engineering or something like that. And you had no idea. And it's like these just more and more people that you were writing off historically, like as you built a relationship with them, they would share more and divulge. And then you're like, oh, wow, this person's actually a really good fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's drilling into the conversation, but I would actually take it even a step further and say everything that you do, like from defining your message and really getting clear on that, on your profile, on your presence, on your social media, it really starts driving those kinds of people towards you. Like right now, I get people coming from a medical background and I'm like, Hey man, yeah. So what, 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 what can I help you with? And you know, how can I help? And they be, and they start saying, "Oh yeah, you know." And I have some interest in IT, and I was thinking maybe I could study something related, but I don't know what to do. And I was like, "Yes, definitely, I can give you some advice." And you know, so it starts bringing out in people the things that um, you know that they could that you could bond with them in terms of your business and uh, the things that you can help them with. So what is, um, okay, so what are some of the metrics you've had? You've only been doing this lead generation for like a week or two. Like we did a lot of like this prep work beforehand. You've gotten like what, like 30 conversations in Messenger so far? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I've been having a lot of conversations, but I think, you know, in the window of the, these two weeks in terms of uh, the stuff that we did, um, and in terms of the niche that we decided to hone down on, uh, maybe around 30 conversations with ICP, so ideal client personas, you know, people who are really matching to the, to the perfect buyer or dream buyer profile. And uh, out of those, we had uh, about 12 quality, quality quick chat calls. And, uh, and from this, about five strategy sessions. Nice. So what, um, like, what is this, like these changes and how you've been seeing how to engage with people and converse with them, what has that meant for your mindset? Like, has it cha just changed how you look at the world and like the opportunity in front of you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, everything is paradigm, you know, and, um, and doing these things and just, it's like playing around with it, you know? It's like testing the market and uh, fiddling around with this new offer and testing it and shipping it out there. So um, doing all this, it kind of helps you explore what's what sort of options and what sort of potential is out there. And uh, some of these conversations, you know, the, the, the example that you mentioned and these other conversations that I'm having, I started to realize that what you see might not be what's everything out there. You know, if, if you if you look at it from a way that, you know, building that relationship with the clients and maybe turning them into perfect clients, you're basically sitting on a gold mine. You know, you have an unlimited supply of, of ideal client personas. Let's dig into that for a second, because it's, I find a lot of people they have this mentality of like, oh, that person's not a fit or, oh, they're not going to work with me. And um, they, yeah, they're like in the habit of judging really prematurely if they're going to be a fit or not. And um, I think it's so interesting what you just said, turning people into ideal clients. And I don't know, because we've talked about this together and I think about it in the same way. And I don't know if it's literally that you turn them into an ideal client or that when you're on the quick chat, you just uncover that they no. were because you're open-minded to it. But in yeah. the moment, it feels like you're literally turning people into ideal clients for you. Like you're creating opportunity yeah. in front of your eyes. And it's like the most powerful feeling. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, that that is a really good point. Because when I say turning into an ideal client, 
you're not changing something about them. You know, you're not changing their situation and where they come from <laughs> and their goals. But actually, you're changing the way you look at the situation or the way you look at them and your perception of them. That's what's changing. So they're turning into an ideal client in your head. Um, and that's, and I can't tell you how many times it happened so far. Like, I get on a call not making so much of it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to have a chat with this person. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not really sure if they're a good fit. And then we start talking and then they speak spit out all these things about themselves <laughs> and I'm like Jesus and, and I got very this close to rescheduling the call or like canceling it and I'm saying to myself I can't believe I almost canceled this call <laughs> that's amazing so what do you think like what areas of your business and life have improved so far okay so business wise so far, I, I have that clarity on my business, on my niche, the people I want to target, the people I want to help, and really the, the vision for the future. So, you know, knowing what kind of targets you want to put for yourself and, uh, and having that vision for the near future, um, that, this is really valuable. And, uh, you know, if you, if you don't have that, you will be depressed, basically, at least for me, because I don't like certainty, certainty, uncertainty. I hate uncertainty, you know, and when I have uncertainty in my life, I get depressed. And so getting that clarity and knowing where I'm headed and really seeing the results in the community as well and the results that you're posting in your own business is definitely an inspiration for me and keeps me kind of thinking forward. Uh, this, is, this is what I can achieve for myself. And this is the mindset side. So, you know, the business side, yeah, message improved, offer improved. This is great. In terms of life, having that clarity and having that peace of mind, okay, that this is actually possible for me. And hopefully in the next three to six months, I could be making like, you know, three closes a month or at least one client every single month. That's consistent income in the business. So I'm actually able to quit my, my job and go full time on the business. This is a this is really my dream, you know. <laughs> if you if you're gonna talk about life improvements, so someone working on their dream is really the best thing that you could uh, think about. That's awesome. So, why do you think things have improved in those ways? Um, why? Because we did the work. I would say. You know, we went, we went and, and we did the work uh, together and uh, we, we set clear goals and we worked on them and we iterated on them. <clears throat> so going back to our sales conversation, why did you decide to do business with me? Um, with you is because the conversation, it wasn't a sales call. You know, it was, <laughs> it wasn't a sales call because basically I had bought before the sales call and maybe it's because of the type of buyer I am, but also because of the way you conduct, conducted the call. Uh, you have already closed me before we got on the conversation because I was looking for someone who could be an inspiration and who is successful in doing those results for themselves and who could help me in my business. And we, when we got on the call, you actually confirmed that to me and you confirmed that you are the type of person I want to work with because you weren't even trying to sell me. You just built that action plan for me that, okay, this is what we're going to do and this is how you can do it. And these are the goals that you want to achieve. That's the action plan and that's how we're going to do it. Nice, nice. So was there anything in that conversation that at the end like really kicked you over the fence, like got you to say yes right then and there? Um, I think it was more of a personal thing to me <clears throat> because I like to work with people with the same mindset, you know, um, people who share the same sort of interest or background or, uh, or journey. And the fact that you come from a technical and technology background 
uh, and the fact that you you know did some boot camps, you got into software, and you did some work with e-commerce startups and things like that. It, these are all things which I felt like okay, we we have a cultural fit because <laughs> I, I you know although you you know you, in growing your business you're looking for a for a tactical fit someone who could help you get the results but also i wanted to get a cultural fit as well from the relationship because it's it's equal equally these two things there was <clears throat> there was something else you also told me do you remember what i'm referring to i don't know if it, you said you um, wanted to work with an american do you yeah. remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, tell me even, more about that. Why did why was that? So that's even more personal uh, because I like American people, you know, <laughs> in general. Um, I grew up with Americans, right? So you know, in that environment, so you know, in the environment that I come from, it's a very humble environment. You know, uh, poor beginnings or you know, really humble beginnings. And we didn't have so much going on in our lives, you know. We we lived in a basement house, very small house. My dad is a working uh, person. My mom is a housewife with three kids. So that kind of environment. And then our American friends, they came into the picture. And they were these, like, cool people. They were, like, the coolest thing that we've ever seen, you know. <laughs> They brought these toys and these gam- these uh, gadgets and the uh, and the trips that we used to have together. So I grew really, really fond of their culture and the way uh, they lived life. And since then, you know, I basically grew up with them, and I spoke in English before I had spoken Arabic really well. So I grew really passionate about Americans and American culture in general. Um, so yeah, that's why. I like the culture and I like the people. That's awesome. Cool. So would you recommend others work with me? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. If you, you know, if they want to really get that clarity and that structure in the work and uh, and work with someone, you know, who's like really on point, you know, I like the the fact that you are direct and you're efficient. That's That's what I really like, you know. We're, we're really efficient because, you know, there's no wasting time and just like joking about and beating around the bush. We're always on point together. Uh, and if, you know, if someone wants that sort of work and they want to see the results and that have that motivation by working with someone. Um, so I definitely recommend working with you. Nice. So who, what type of coaches or consultants do you think we're a good fit for? Uh, in terms of your business? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think people who are getting started and they don't know what's out there for them because there's so much noise in this niche. You know, there's so much going on. People telling you, yeah, do Facebook ads. Yeah, do this. Yeah, do value content, you know. And... Um, and just being able to see someone who's doing really well organically, it just kind of tells you, okay, maybe it's not just about the technology and the tactics, you know, and the things that you do and like these gimmicks and how you can trick people into coming on your page and uh, collecting leads and things like that. It's really about having a strong offer, having a, a way to connect with people. This is all about humans. You know, you're trying, trying to sell to humans and if you are the kind of coach and person who believes in the human connection, then that's definitely, uh, you know, you're, you're in the right place to work with you. So if someone like that is listening, if anyone's listening right now and they're on the fence, why should they take action right now? I would say they, they should take action because as an entrepreneur, you definitely don't want to be that entrepreneur who mulls shit over, you know? <laughs> you know, you remember when we had the sales call, you pitched the price. I was like, it's done, you know? It, it was, I didn't haggle on the price. I didn't talk about like, yeah, I need to think about it or I need to get back to you. 
I just made the decision then and there. Because if you want to get results, you want to move quick on them. Uh, the world is moving really fast and really quick, especially in these digital times. And you don't want to be that person who, you know, think, yeah, I'm going to think about it. Because whatever happens, if you make the decision quickly, you better make like a not perfect decision rather than not making a decision at all. So people should act right now. Um, and, you know, and honestly, maybe now you have the time to, to work with people. And, but in the future, you know, things, you know, people might miss out on like getting that support and, um, and getting that hands-on approach. So, so, you know, wasting time, it doesn't help anyone really. That's an interesting point. Like I think a lot of people think that like when you're doing B2B, these types of relationship sales, they think that they're, they don't, it's not conscious, but subconsciously they think almost like they're buying like a shirt off the rack where the the shirt's going to be there in three months, six months, nine months. But it's like, as my business evolves and your business evolves, like, like the deal that I present now, it's not necessarily going to be there in a month or two months. And it's not, I'm not trying to be scarcity tactics. I'm not trying to trick anybody right now. It's just the truth. Yeah. So I've missed so many chances that I know too well not to, uh, not to uh, mull things over, you know, right now you are offering your services at a certain price point. In the future, you're going to have more people come on board. You want, you're going to want to scale your business. You want to help more people. So they, they will probably have to pay more or they will probably need to do more, take more effort to be part of this. Yep. So things are moving forward really quick. If you want to start something, do it now. So what is your number one piece of advice for coaches and consultants? I would say um, really, you know, don't mull things over. Again, you know, to, to the last point, don't spend too much time just trying with different things. Getting clarity on your business and on your goals is really crucial. Uh, and it's, and that's, that's like an age-old um, advice, really. You know, don't put so, – effort in many different directions and trying different things that you're not really sure that they're going to work, but really look at something that actually works and work with someone who has done these things for themselves and take that advice and just implement it. You know, do, do the work, don't waste time because the world, you know, is moving quickly. Yep. So what I'm hearing is like getting clarity, focusing and doing basically fewer things but doing them better much better world class world class <laughs> <laughs> it's not about doing a whole bunch of things but it's doing less things yeah it's literally doing less things man uh since we but started doing them better <laughs> yeah but better so doing less things but at a better quality and a better level and a better standard uh since we started working together I feel so comfortable. Like it's not more work, it's less work, but the quality of the conversations is better. The quality of the process, the quality of the offer is is better and the quality of the process is better. And so it's less work, but uh, a better, a higher quality. So what do you think in the next like week to four weeks, what's next for you? What do you think is like going to happen? So... In the next week? Week to four weeks. Like, what are your next objectives? Like, what is right around the corner? Like, do you feel like you're going to make a sale here in a minute? Yeah, so I feel I'm, I'm close to, uh, to making a sale and the new offer. You know, uh, we're, we're really close to positioning that and just getting, you know, just today I got off a really good strategy session. And we, we have a thumbs up, thumbs down call booked. So, uh, yeah, I feel really getting close to, to getting that dream buyer to buy. And it's going to be different than before. Because if I have one dream buyer this month, the next month is going to be, you know, much, much, uh, much better than the previous month. So, um, so, yeah, maybe making a close or two on a dream buyer, this, is, this would be uh, the next milestone. Let's make the- it happen, man. Yeah. Let's do it. 
<laughs> so if people want to learn more about you, where can they find out more about you online? Absolutely. So uh, they can go to joadsabra.com or my Facebook, Joad Sabra, as well. Uh, LinkedIn, yeah, and everything is on my Facebook profile. They can learn about what I do and see uh, all about my content and the way we help people as well. Awesome, Joad. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. And again, like it's been such a pleasure working with you. I'm really having fun. And um, yeah, I'm just so excited for you and I can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks, man. Likewise. And uh, really good talking to you. And I really enjoyed this uh, conversation as well. Likewise. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.